In less than just a couple of weeks time, Nvidia will finally launch the GeForce 20. So Turing will finally be available for testing and we can see exactly what the new architecture will bring for gamers. But one of the rumors we're hearing already is that Turing will feature a more aggressive boosting model. But there's a question then, what exactly is GPU boost in relation to Nvidia and how does it actually work? Now, most of the stuff is applicable to AMD as well, but with a few notable exceptions, and I'll go into those during the video. But I think it's a good refresher for everyone who perhaps isn't so familiar with GPU boost to at least know what the card is capable of and how it's functioning. And we're going to go into a few overclocking basics as well. So my name's Paul, and in this Red Gaming Silicon video, we're going to be doing that very investigation. So what is GPU boost? Well, you'll notice with a modern day graphics card, we're going to be using a GTX 1080 as a point of reference, but it's the same with older generation cards such as the 9 series as well. And certainly with other cards in the Pascal lineup, for example, the 1080, the 1060 and so on, that they have a base clock along with a boost clock. Now the question generally arises that, okay, well the boost clock is let's say 1750 megahertz. So the base clock will be there, the boost clock's there, but a lot of the question is, well, why is it not sticking at 1750 megahertz? Is there something wrong with my card? Because no, it's going to 1800 megahertz or 1850 megahertz or whatever. And this is actually down to a couple of things. The first is power limit and the second is heat. So when load is first put on the GPU, you'll notice within just a few seconds, the card starts to boost its clock speed way above base, and then eventually it will hit above what it's quoted at for boost clocks. And the reason behind this is because it's not run into one of the two limits that I've just mentioned, either power or temperature. But when we start hitting the limits of, let's say, temperature, the card will then start to throttle the clock speed back, and it does so in increments. It won't just jump from, let's say, uh, 1850 megahertz down to 1750 megahertz. The reason behind that is very simple. What would happen then is you would get quite a bit of jarring because you might leave those two, three, four, five frames a second, depending upon the resolution. And that could be very noticeable to the gamers. So instead, NVIDIA have developed an algorithm which will step things down slowly so that it doesn't become quite so noticeable for gamers. Now, once again, so the GPU clocks will start to ramp up significantly. And as it becomes closer to the temperature limit around the 80 ish degree mark at standard, you will notice that the clock speed starts to slow down. And then when it peaks above 80, it will slowly start to step down the clock speed so that the card maintains a stable speed and doesn't start and doesn't need to just crank down the clocks immediately. So now we're going to jump into the actual testing itself to show the difference in not only performance, but what actually happens to the clocks with different settings, including different fan profiles, manually adding an offset to the clocks, as well as adjusting power limits and so on. We're going to be using two different benchmarks, mostly because those are the ones that were installed in the system at this point. Uh, we have Metro Last Light, it's a nice demo because it continues to loop over and over and over again. And we actually set it to three different uh, loops at these different uh, speeds. And then we can look at the average of the, each of those results. And we also have Heaven because it also loops and it generates an awful lot of heat while not putting much load on the CPU. So it's quite ideal. With that said, let's jump into the testing. We're going to kick things off with Heaven with four distinctive profiles set in MSI Afterburner. The first is default Afterburner settings, which speak for themselves. The second would be max power and temperature limits, where we crank them up to the maximum possible. Then we have 100 megahertz overclock plus max power and temperature limits. And then finally, we have 100 megahertz overclock plus full V-core, maximum fan, as well as temperature and power limits. Heaven is a pretty lengthy benchmark, but the key here is to pay close attention to the GPU clocks as the benchmark progresses. Simply by maxing the power and temperature limits, we gain around 100 megahertz on the core as we get closer to the end of the test. And the other two results do better still. Thank you. 
with the maximum fan speed, of course, allowing the GPU to maintain a cooler temperature, and thus stick much closer to the 2 GHz mark on the core. At the end of the video, I've also placed this test uncut, so you can go ahead and check it out in real time. Then we're going to move over to Metro Last Light. Much like Heaven, we cranked everything to the highest settings possible, a 1080p, yes, but with SSAA enabled, which is very punishing, of course, to the graphics card. We allowed the GPU to run free loops here, so that temperatures would climb up. Once again, we have the default settings, which speak for themselves, as does the max power and temperature. And finally, we have the maximum V-core power, temperature, and fan all at their limits, as well as 125 megahertz applied to both core and memory. As Metro Last Light benchmark continues, you'll see almost 150 megahertz separate the default settings compared to max power and temperature throughout the testing, and this becomes even more profound towards the end. Although, of course, as you'd expect, maxing the V-core, power, temperature, and fan, plus the overclock, gives the best results here. With over 120 MHz over the max power and temperature alone. Of course, noise do go up, so the better option would be to have a more aggressive fan profile, put the GPUs under water cooling, or of course have a better third-party cooling solution. And finishing off, we have the performance results of Metro Last Light in a handy-dandy graph. And there's a couple of things I'd like you to note. The first, of course, is the frame rate. We have all three runs, plus the average of the three runs listed here, Focusing on run 1, you'll notice that the default settings and max power and temperature have essentially identical performance, with the overclocking results being the best. But as the GPU temperature increases, as obviously it does when you would game naturally, run 2 and 3 then have a greater amount of separation, and by run 3, the GPU is no longer able to keep up the core clock with the uh, default settings, and therefore the max power and temperature start to separate even further, but if you were to look at the max power, temperature, v-core, fan, as well as the overclock, it, it maintains 94.5 FPS. In other words, it's essentially identical, and you can see this also reflected in the average of the free runs, with the frame rate being consistent with all free runs with the average temperature, and the default settings slowly going down. The 9 series, this one is a GTX 960, works quite similarly with a few exceptions, but what about AMD then? Uh, this particular card is a reference model RX 480, but we can also speak very similarly for the RX 580 and Vega and so on and so on. Well, there is a key difference with AMD compared to that of Nvidia, and it's really simple. Whatever the boost clock is for, let's say, the RX 480, is the maximum that the GPU will clock to. So that's one of the reasons that you get a lot of confusion from AMD owners who jump ship to NVIDIA, because they're going to say, well, what's going on? My GPU clock should be like 1750, and it's going to 1800 megahertz, just for example. Whereas with this, if it says a particular clock speed, as either an AIB custom uh, clock or a reference model, it will not exceed that boost. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that you can't crank things up. If you want to add 50 or 100 megahertz or whatever manually, either with AMD's own drivers or with a third-party software such as EVGA Precision or MSI Afterburner or whatever, then that's totally down to you, but the GPU just will not do it alone. Anyway, we have all of that said, hopefully you have found this video informative. If you have, well, you can click the subscribe button and the bell icon as well to be notified with results and give us a like and give us a comment as well. That would be greatly appreciated. Uh, we, you can also support us on Patreon. Link is in the video description. We certainly don't expect it, but if you want to check us out and maybe consider donating, of course, all of those proceeds go towards the channel to help us buy 
new equipment and well you know just bring you the best content possible in the video description you can also check out a couple of affiliate links if you want to buy a new gpu of course we do get a slight commission for that but it doesn't cost you anything but once again it's another way to help out the channel with all of that said hopefully you have enjoyed the video and i'll see you soon take care bye for now